Assalamu alaikum man, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna be going over basics of filmmaking. And we're very lucky to be invited by Garage Studios. So today's shoot is actually brought to you by Garage Studios located in Dubai. And you'll see the information in the description. So this is where we're gonna be shooting. All right, so let's, let's get right to it. Okay, in basics of filmmaking, this is gonna be a very quick tutorial, but it should be, you should be able to pick up a camera, set yourself up, and start shooting almost immediately after this tutorial. All right, guys, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about is lights. Without lights, you can't have film, you can't have anything, right? So this goes to show you, one of the most important things in filmmaking is lights. So the first one on the list is the key light. Then you got the fill light. Then you have the backlight. And in some cases you have, well, in many cases, you have the rim light or the hair light. This is a fully lit situation and this is what it's all about. Key light is one of the most important lights in your setup. It's the one that's usually focused on your subject or your character, and it lights up the majority of his face. The fill light usually sits the opposite of the key light. So it sits on the opposite side, and it reduces the contrast. The stronger the fill light, the less dramatic, and the softer the fill light, the more dramatic. And this is because of the intensity of the key light overpowering. The backlight is usually used to separate the actor from the background and add depth to the scene. So having these three lights together gives you a three-point lighting setup. There are also a few other setups that we use, sometimes in conjunction or sometimes separate. For an example, we have a rim light. A rim light is very important when you're having a talking head because it gives you separation over the shoulders and over the head, so this is really important. Another thing you have is a diffuser. A diffuser, if you look at the lights that we're using now, every, just about every single one has a diffuser on them with the exception of the backlight. But the diffuser is supposed to be used to soften the light and it works great in outdoor scenes. If you're in the sun, you could also put a diffuser completely towards the sun and soften the light from coming in. Now let's talk about some rules. The first rule we want to talk about is the rule of thirds. For the rule of thirds in video, similar to photography, you want to make sure that your subject or your character is on the right side of the frame with having their eye on the upper third. If you have the character or subject on the left side looking forward and then you have the back two-thirds empty, it would look kind of odd. The next rule we have is the 180 cinematography rule. Now this rule is really important for keeping your viewers kind of on the same track with what's going on in the scenes. There's a cinematography guideline that states two characters in a scene should maintain the same left and right relationship to one another. Another rule we have is the 180 degree shutter rule. Now in this rule it's very important. This is where you capture what's called motion blur. Motion blur you could demonstrate to yourself right now. Take your hands, put them in front of your face, swipe them up and down, you'll see what's a blur. This is the closest to reality that we get. Now to achieve this we have to do what's called the 180 degree shutter rule. And what that is, is we take the frame rate, multiply it two times the shutter speed. Now that's if you're dealing with DSLR and mirrorless cameras. If you're dealing with cinema cameras, then you're gonna do what's called a shutter angle. So you'll take 180 degrees on your shutter angle, you have 24 FPS, that is usually, when you put 180 degrees, that's usually two times right there. For those of you guys that are using DSLR and mirrorless cameras, if your, shutter, if your frame rate is at 24 FPS, then your shutter speed should be one over 48. This is two times the frame rate. Now, 
you might not, now if you're looking through your camera right now, you might not find 48, 1 over 48. So the next best thing is 1 over 50. So again, if you're shooting at 24 FPS, your shutter speed should be 1 over 50. All right, next we're gonna talk about camera angles. Now, this is kind of the fun stuff. So this is where your creativity really comes to life by using these camera angles. So one of the camera angles that we have is establishing shot. So an establishing shot is usually an extreme wide shot. It lets the viewers know where the scene is taking place. The next camera angle that we have is a wide shot. A wide shot shows everything that's happening in the scene. And the third one that we have is a medium shot. A medium shot is usually from the waist to the head of the actor and is used for dialogue and body language. Next we have a medium close-up shot. A medium close-up is usually from the mid torso to the head of the actor and is used to, sh is used to show the audience facial expressions and emotions and also to retain some of the background in your shots. Then we have the close-up. The close-up usually, usually is used on the actor's face and adds emotion to the scene. Then you have the extreme close-up. The extreme close-up reveals the actor's eyes to reveal stronger emotion. Then you have a high angle. High angles are usually used to make the actor look weak. So the camera's looking right down at the actor. He looks small, weak. Then you have the opposite, which is the low angle. The low angle is used to make the subject look strong and powerful. Because the camera's down looking up, so this is called, this is another name for this is the hero shot. So looking up, chest out, he just looks big and strong. Then you have a Dutch angle. A Dutch angle is a little creative. So whenever you have a scene or a scenario where something is about to happen and or uh, you know there's some kind of drama going on something some, so you'll have the camera tilted and pointing up or tilted pointing down looking at the face of the subject it's generally placed on its roll axis and this is where drama is about to happen pan Pan is very easy, and pan is also very common. Turning the camera on a fixed axis and usually used to reveal part of the scene that are larger than the display or follow the actor as they walk. Tilt. Tilt is similar to pan, but the opposite. You go vertical, so either you go up, down, or down, up. Crabbing which is called, has many other terms. Crabbing is when you have the camera and you're walking with the subject. So the character is walking and the camera is moving along with them side to side. Kind of like a crab. Tracking shot. Tracking shot is a fun shot. It also has different names as well. You'll hear the name dolly come in, dolly in, dolly out, track in, track out, track in, track out usually refers to pushing forward or moving backwards following an actor or a subject. Now let's talk about a couple of things that are really important. Focus pull. Now we're not going to talk about the equipment too much on focus pulling, but we are going to talk about what focus pulling does. So a focus puller normally would pull focus for you. Uh, there would usually be a cable coming out of here or if you're using an electronical autofocus, then a focus system, then he would be using what's called a fizz and he would be pulling focus remotely uh, away from the cameraman. But the cameraman himself, the DP, can also pull focus and this is when the director wants to switch focus from one character to another. That's what we're gonna talk about. So if you're using a DSLR, just to generalize, if you're using a DSLR or a mirrorless, you have autofocus. If you're using a cinema camera, you have manual focus and you need a focus puller. If you look at your screen, you're gonna see focusing on the foreground, then switching the focus to the background or focusing on the first character, switching the focus to the second character. This is a way to keep 
your viewers engaged and following what you want them to see. Now next is probably one of the most important things right next to lighting, and that is sound or audio. Your audio design is very important. Collecting your sound is very important. How you record your audio is very, very crucial. Now we're gonna talk about the equipment for sound and audio that we use. On your screen, you should be able to see a shotgun mic. Right next to it, you have a lav mic. Then you have a sound mixer or an audio recorder. Then you need a boom pole. And then you also need XLR cables. This is the equipment, this is the pretty, pretty much the standard equipment that you would need on set. The most common mics on set are usually a shotgun, shotgun mics. Shotgun mics with a boom pole allow you to go over the character, under the character. You can twist them and spin them any way you want because they are one direction. So sound only comes from the front. Wherever you point them, that's where the sound comes in from. So they will not collect sound from the sides. If there's an airplane overhead, if there's a car in the distance, if, uh, if someone is saying something in the background, it will, not, it will most likely not pick up that sound because it's pointing right to the mouthpiece of the actor or subject. A sound mixer is just as important because for getting top quality audio, you wanna make sure you have amplified sound coming in and not the sound that's built into the camera. Now cameras have gotten better, so if you have a DSLR or if you have a mirrorless, sometimes you can just go right into the jack plug in your shotgun mic there, which many, many vloggers do, and it kind of works for them. That does the job. Next, we're gonna touch up on camera setup. We're just gonna talk about basics of camera setup. It's very similar to photography. Your settings are similar, but we're gonna just touch up on frame rate, FPS a little bit more, because that's what's different than photography. Your ISO is the same thing in photography, sensitivity to light on the sensor, and noise. So, in photography, we try to keep our ISO down to 100. In cameras, we are usually at 800. In some cameras, 400, up to 3200. Just keep in mind, the higher the ISO, the possibility of more noise, depending on the type of camera that you're using. Cameras have gotten better with ISO over the years. They've gotten a lot stronger, but you just have to keep in mind that you, this is the sensitivity to light on the sensor, so there will be some type of noise. So you need to be careful with that. FPS, FPS stands for frames per second. This refers to how many times an image appears on a display per second. Many cameras that are DSLR are 24 or 25. Cinema, you could actually go, you have the option to go piece by piece. FPS, you can go all the way down and all the way up and uh, roll right through. So they don't, they don't roll in bunches. Most common aperture that most filmmakers shoot at is 2.8. Even though they have the ability to go down to 1.4, 1.2, or 0.95 with some lenses, there's a whole thing on aperture. We'll talk about on a, on a, on a separate review, on a separate tutorial, but right now, Letting you know 2.8 is most common, but if you need to adjust your aperture, then you could do that. Sometimes you might see a big box, what's called a map box, sitting in front of the lens, and this is used to control the frame rate when you go outdoors. So when you're shooting in the sun or when you're shooting in a, a very well lit situation that it's out of your control, you don't, have, you don't have too much control over the lighting, you still need to be able to control your frames per second, your FPS. It's very important that you do that to maintain that cinematic look. And the way they do that is they put this map box right in front of the lens and that has these glass cylinders that you guys see here. And these will actually, they're like wearing sunglasses. So when you put the sunglasses on your eyes, usually it prevents that strong, harsh light from coming into your eyes. Same thing with lenses. You are putting sunglasses on your lenses to prevent that harsh light from coming in and allow you to maintain 24 FPS or else you'd have to jack up your shutter speed really high and your aperture just to keep the scene evenly lit. 
One common mistake is everything is wide. So they'll get one lens, whether it be a 16 or 18 or a 20 or a 24, and they shoot everything wide. Look at your screen right now and look how look what happens when you have a scene of two men that are either fighting or having dialogue, acting it out, and it's just shot in wide. So here, you can't really relate to the characters. You can't see the emotions. You can't really feel what's going on. It's just like looking at something from a distance and it doesn't really have that impact for filmmaking. That's why we use different camera angles. That's why we also use different focal lengths so we can get up close with the characters, capture those emotions, see what their eyes are like, what their, what their facial features, how they're reacting to certain scenes. This is very important to keep to keeping the viewers engaged and following the story. All right, guys, thanks for following along. Really appreciate it. And if you have any questions on basics of filmmaking, please make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. And again, a big thank you to Garage Studios for allowing us to use their studio to shoot. You can find more information on them down below. And uh, yeah, hey, listen, if you guys want to see more tutorials like this, uh, give me a subscribe, hit the like button, tap the bell, and let me know. I'd love to hear back from you. All right, thanks again, and I'll catch you on the next one.